Hi, uh, my name is Jason Busby and I'm a student in the School of Biological Sciences. Now, New Zealand's got a lot of cows and sheep, and if you ask a farmer, they'll tell you that if you're farming cows and sheep, what you're really farming is grass, which means that guy up there on the right is um, a major pest. It's the New Zealand grass grub. It's the larva of the common brown beetle, and it lives in the soil eating grass roots, which is bad for grass, bad for farmers, bad for cows. Egg research has found a New Zealand bacterium which kills grass grub by causing amber disease. Basically, the grubs stop eating, turn amber, and eventually die. And that's been taken through and made into a product that farms can apply to their fields as a kind of biological insecticide. And that's fine, but there's a few problems with it. First of all, it only affects New Zealand grass grub, which is fine for us, but it means that it lacks international marketability. In other words, we can't sell it to the Australians. <laughs> And the other problem is the grubs take quite a long time to die. They essentially starve to death over the course of several months. We'd like something which works a bit faster. They found a second bacterium which kills grass grub a lot faster in about 24 hours. And what's more, it's effective against a wide range of insect species, um, including painted apple moth, diamondback moth, even locusts. This new bacterium produces a large protein toxin complex which is responsible for all the killing. And not a lot's known about these complexes. Um, we're particularly interested in how they work, obviously, and what uh, determines their specificity towards different insect species. Our collaborators are taking an overall approach, and they're looking at the entire complex by electron microscopy. And you can see one of the images up there in red and yellow. Um, and that gives you a good kind of broad overview of the complex, but it doesn't give you the nitty-gritty details to see what's really going on. That's where I come in. I'm taking a divide and conquer approach to looking at the structure of this complex. So I'm taking individual pieces of the complex, expressing them, purifying them, crystallizing them, and putting them in an X-ray beam, and eventually getting high resolution X-ray structures, like up there on the right. And that has all the, um, the detail, the resolution you need to see what's going on, but you can only do that on one piece at a time. So then we'll be taking these two techniques and combining them taking my low resolution, uh, sorry, my high resolution crystal structures and docking them back into the low resolution EM map to give us a combined image which has the best of both worlds and will hopefully give us some insight into how these uh, toxins function. 